Welcome back to Corbin AI, where I am showing you daily how to start leveraging artificial intelligence in your personal and your business life. In this video, we're gonna go over comprehensively everything you need to know about the ChatGPT memory key found in Zapier. And you're gonna learn in this video why Zapier essentially is such a powerful tool for allowing us to use this. Furthermore, I'm gonna break this tutorial down into three major parts. The first part here, I'm going to explain essentially what's incurring in the back end of Zapier by showing it through a actual ChatGPT chat that we can do with the front end. So we're gonna understand intuitively, essentially what is the function that this is serving. The second part of this tutorial is we're gonna jump into Zapier and I'm gonna show you some examples with a memory key, without a memory key, explain use cases of the memory key in different contexts of why you'd use it and maybe why you wouldn't use it. And then the latter part of this tutorial essentially is I'm gonna go on a whiteboard and I'm gonna draw out essentially what's truly happening with the code and essentially how this is being achieved. So, you know, you can really understand from, you know, from the start to finish everything that's covered with the memory key and why it's such a powerful tool. But without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into today's video here where we're gonna explore all the functionalities of the memory key. So before we jump into Zapier's front end, let's go ahead and explain essentially what's even happening. So essentially what the memory key does is if I wasn't going to use the memory key found here on Zapier, essentially every single conversation that incurs within the Zapier flow is going to be the start of a fresh conversation. So what do I mean by that? If we jump over to ChatGPT's front end, essentially it'd be like this. Uh, we need a uh, dog or we need captions for my company. We are a real estate company. Wow, that's how you spell <laughs> in Florida. So this is what happens when you don't add a memory key. Okay, we need captions for a company. Okay, it's going to bring out, um, you know, give me captions for the the real estate company in Florida, and it's going to go like this. But here's what's incurring if you don't have a memory key. Essentially, what happens is that it goes through the automation once. Okay, great. Now when you go through it a second time, essentially you're starting the chat all over again from the very beginning. So as you'll see here, the answers will be different, but here's the thing. The answers also could be the same because of the fact that we're starting the chat fresh again, uh, essentially it could lead to the same outputs that we saw in the chat that occurred three chats ago. So essentially all that's happening when you don't have a memory keys, I'm just resubmitting and restarting a chat with OpenAI's API. So this can be used in some use cases, but the reason this is detrimental, as I said before, is due to the fact that some of these outputs will be repeated, which isn't gonna be good. Maybe I'm doing a social media caption and I don't want to use this same caption of turning your sunshine state dreams into reality. And therefore, because there's no pre-contextual context, it causes issues in scaling and when there is repeated you know, automations that occur through the same flow. So what I mean by that essentially is this is what happens when we add a memory key. We said we need captions for my company, real estate company, Florida. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just say save submit. So let's just say we just went through the first time of the flow, but we still have that memory key. We can go ahead and proceed further down the conversations. We say we need more captions. Don't repeat past ones. So I'm going to go ahead and let this generate. So as you see here, we got a output of 20 captions. And just so we don't go crazy again, I'm gonna say uh, max of five new captions. But essentially, let's say we add a memory key, we've added the memory key. Now we're gonna get more captions. And just in this context, we're gonna get five more captions. But the captions that are outputted here aren't gonna be repeating because of the fact that we know the captions we've already outputted in the past. So what this means essentially is that by adding a memory key, as you see in the front end version, we're giving essentially the chat context of previous outputs, which is a very powerful tool and very powerful asset to have in the context of automation as we will dive into right now. So when we come over to our memory key here, or sorry, our chat GPT block, let's just say we do the same exact uh, output here. We say generate captions. I'm gonna go ahead and just, you know, honestly copy the input here. We need captions from my company. We are a real estate company in Florida. I'm gonna paste that in here. We'll keep with the 3.5 here and essentially, Maybe we just add a little space, space there. Um, no memory key. We're gonna continue here and then we're gonna go ahead and test this step and we're gonna get a output that we're asking for, but here is the kicker. Essentially, every single time it does this output, it's going to look different in some way, whether it's small, whether it's not small, you'll see in this test here. So as you see, we got 10 different captions here. We got quotation marks. Let's go ahead and come back over here and we're gonna continue again and we're gonna retest this step. There we go. As you'll see, there is going to be different captions here, but the problem is that some of these captions may have already been used. So I keep hitting retest this step and essentially we're not getting consistent outputs at scale if this automation were to incur a lot of times. And just to sh really showcase this, I'm gonna say uh, add emojis 
and hashtags to each caption. And then I'm gonna go ahead and hit continue here and test this action. So there isn't a lot of times that you'll use a chat block without a memory key. Due to the fact that memory keys ensure that the output I see during the debugging phase and the testing phase, I can expect to see, you know, three, you know, three weeks from now. Problem is, is that if we don't add a memory key, what you'll notice is that, yeah, it might look fine in the debugging phase, but let this automation run 10, 20 times, and you're gonna go to start seeing some outputs that you're not gonna like, and it's gonna cause you to come back to this chat GPT block, wonder why your prompt isn't working, but in reality, it's just because it has no contextual data to base off its decision. Therefore, as you see here, what was the major difference that we saw between this one and the other one was we wanna have an indentation here, but also the way it placed the underlying emojis, um, you know, previously it had the emojis in the beginning here, but now it's like putting them throughout. We're not getting consistent output. So therefore add contextual data here. We can go ahead and, you know, put in a cap out and we can say, we need captions for my company. We are a real estate company in Florida. Add emojis uh, and hashtags for each caption parameters. Don't repeat past captions. So here's what's going to occur here. I'm going to hit, uh, test this action here and essentially what we're doing here is that we're going this is the first chat that's incurring within this memory key so this is the first thing i just started a new chat and this is my new memory key uh the memory key is associated with the chat right so essentially as you see here here is how it's formatted notice how there's quotation marks notice how essentially there seems to be an emoji in the front and then emoji found later on in it so let's go ahead and retest this and we can go ahead and uh, retest this step and we should see similar structuring here because we're using the same chat. Therefore, we can expect the same type of output. So there we go. Let's see if this is a new chat here. There we go. So the new chat came in. Notice how we have quotation marks still. We have the emoji in the front and then we have the emojis later on. Now we're getting consistent output here, outputs here and we have identified essentially don't use past outputs found within the cap out chat uh, that's happening here. Now that being said, this kind of logic and this kind of proceeding usually works best with GBT4. It can work with 3.5, but you know, in some contexts, you'd probably, you know, if you're putting out like maybe in a social media post, you probably only want to generate one caption. So it's easier to track essentially to make sure there is no repetitiveness of the underlying outputs. You know, a great example of this is using memory keys in the context of AI article generators. Essentially, when we push out a bunch of articles, we don't want to have an article that was already written four weeks ago and occur again. Therefore, you know, the way we structure and the way we format our prompts need to work in pair with our memory key. Um, therefore, that's why having a memory key is so important in the context of automation, as now we can ensure that essentially the outputs will be consistent or alternatively consistent in the sense of essentially the output won't have, you know, maybe we don't want quotation marks there. Let's ensure that no quotation marks will come out. Uh, maybe we don't want emojis in there, so we'd add some type of formatter there. Another thing you can do as well is let's say you get a memory key and you get an output that's really, really good, but the problem is that there is just one slight thing that's wrong with the memory key, but you can't seem to, you know, refresh the chat um, in order to get, let's say the quotation marks out in this context. That's where the formatter block from Zapier comes into play as essentially we can take that consistent output found in that chat GBT block, but you know, remove small things. So for example, if I wanted to remove the quotation marks, I could do, you know, manipulate the text. We're gonna go ahead and do an event of replace. And essentially what I would do here is put in the input, uh, the reply here, and I'd find the quotation marks I would remove it with empty space here and then I would test this step and then all quotation marks found in this output are gone now and we can kind of utilize it from there. With that being said, essentially understanding how and when to use memory keys is pretty fundamental. I would say there isn't many use cases that you wouldn't use a memory key. The only time I could really think of it is maybe it's like a very like summarize this, uh, find a key point in this, um, even stuff like that, you still would want to use a memory key because the fact that it's a, you want to ensure that the output that you're dealing with, the data that's going to be manipulated throughout the flow is is going to look the same. So there isn't no random quotation mark that's added in there, comma that's added in there, an emoji that's added in there. Having a memory key ensures that certain things that, certain discrepancies that could incur in an output wouldn't incur. Now, knowing this essentially, when you add a one here, essentially all I'm doing is starting a new chat. You know, a new memory key, think of it as a new chat. And if you're familiar with talking to chat GPT in the front end, you know, sometimes you can go down rabbit holes or, you know, you keep reproctoring a chat to the point that you're actually better off just starting a new chat because this allows you to start on a clean slate and ensure that the output that you get looks uh, more effective and more better for whatever the use case that you have. So 
Now we understand the use case of a memory key and why it's so fundamental. Let's go and explain a little bit more of what's actually happening here and why this is such a powerful tool in the context of automation. Now, I'll be honest with you, this is very impressive for Zapier to have. And the reason why this is impressive for Zapier to have is that everything that you see here as a input essentially is provided within OpenAI's API. And what I mean by that is Max tokens is not something custom that Zapier made. Temperature is not something custom that Zapier made. Top P isn't something custom that Zapier made. This is stuff that you call upon within OpenAI's API. It's already essentially like there. Like the functions already exist. This though, a memory key, doesn't actually exist within OpenAI's API calls um, intuitively. And that's why it's so powerful. And that's why using Zapier as an automation tool just for that fact alone should push you over the edge if you're choosing between automation tools, especially in the context of artificial intelligence, because from my understanding, other tools don't have the functionality of a memory key. So let's go ahead and talk about what's actually happening here with this memory key and why it's so powerful. So we know that essentially when we use a chat GBT block in Zapier, oh, that is not what I want. We are essentially basically doing an API call within OpenAI, we provide our key. And essentially when we write out a user message, we are just you know prompting it within OpenAI's API and they just made it really nice and look really nice for us. So it's just like drag or input values and essentially we don't have to see the raw code, which is fine. But what's happening, which is so impressive about this memory key is that Zapier, essentially what they're doing is that there are, they're creating their own database of conversations for you. Um, so the traditional way of handling the OpenAI's API call in the context of code is that you'll write out a, you know, your user message, maybe some of the top P temperature stuff of this nature. And essentially what happens is in the context of code, you don't have uh, any pre-contextual data. The, that's a one-off message. Therefore, you'll have to make sure that you, you know, adjust the temperature, the top P to a certain amount. So to ensure that because we have no previous messages to base off our output, we have to ensure that every single time we start that new chat, the output is exactly what we want, which makes it a lot more complex and more complicated because that means two things. That means that we're gonna have to really understand how to prompt, and that means we're gonna have to really understand how to handle temperature, max tokens, assistant instructions, assistant name, a bunch of other variables we really need to understand in order to ensure that every single time we start a new quote unquote chat or we call upon the API, it is a consistent output. It requires a lot higher threshold of understanding when it comes to prompting. But what Zapier does, which is super, super cool, is instead of every single time is a new chat and therefore the outputs are inconsistent, they do with the memory key, of course, if you use the memory key, is that by inputting that memory key, now I do that chat. Now the next output that incurs, it's going to base off the formatting, the structuring, the output, the type of stuff that we already like based off this chat. It knows that essentially that this chat went by fine and essentially the next chat is going to be a similar type of output to the previous chat. Therefore, what this ensures us to do and what a memory key allows us to do is that every future chat is going to be consistent in the way it comes out because of that pre-contextual data. Um, so instead of essentially every single time we send an API call, it's basically just shooting in the dark if it's not really formatted or structured well when it comes to temperature and stuff. It is basically already knows within you know the grounds of the type of outputs you like based off the memory key you provided. So the next question is, how do they do this and what's going on here? I'm not sure, uh, I think they actually, I am sure they use AWS as their backend, which is like, you know, one of the major cloud functioning uh, backends in the world. And essentially what they do, which is like really cool, is, um, you know, you'll put in your first prompt and you'll lock in your memory key. So this would be a little memory key here. They send that as a data file to your specific backend as a, you know, this is the memory key, this is the data associated with this memory key for this specific user. And essentially every, sing, every, every single time a new chat occurs, it's that data is being sent to the your backend uh, for that specific memory key. And essentially what this allows it to do is, you know, that what's what's happening here, right? The pre-contextual data of this chat knows what's said here. They're doing that in their own way of AWS, which makes this super powerful as that whole process right there would require very complex code and it'd be very data intensive. But it seems like Zapier is willing to take that uh, on their back end. And I don't blame them because honestly, this memory key is extremely powerful. If you are running an automation company or your automation company uh, really wants to have more, 
easier use cases or the ability to really use artificial intelligence within your flows and you don't offer the capability of having a memory key, having pre-contextual data, you're shooting yourself in the foot. This is out of all stuff here, other than the prompt, the prompt is the most important. This is the, okay, well, and the model, of course, but regardless of the model, just actual input stuff, prompt's most important, memory key is the second most important, hands down, hands down is the second most important because of the fact that instead of us shooting in the dark every single time, we are having pre-contextual data that's gonna base off our future outputs, we can know consistency will occur, which will mean we will be able to scale better, which means that our, our automations work better, which means when we build out automation, for a client, we don't have that client talking to us three weeks later talking about now my chat GPT outputs don't work well or there is inconsistencies in the output. That's what the memory key does for you. And that is why Zapier is so powerful in the context of automation, especially for artificial intelligence because we are afforded the ability to use a memory key. Um, using a memory key in any other context, you would have to set up a lot of complex code, a lot of backend stuff, a lot of data storage, a lot of huge shabam. And all we need to do and all we need to understand is that essentially put in a max of 32 characters, random string of characters, I can put anything here. And essentially those characters represent the chat that's occurring within this automation flow and specifically within this automation flow. So if you feel like you learned something, make sure to leave a like for the value that you just learned today. It really helps us here out, Corbin AI. Let me know if you want more tutorials around this topic. If you're interested in learning more about artificial intelligence and automation, I'm gonna leave a playlist at the end here. But essentially we're diving into all 5,000 apps found on Zapier store and I'm showing how artificial intelligence is, you know, encompassed in every single one. If you want to learn more about prompt structuring and essentially how to handle chat GBT blocks, I'm going to link a video at the end as well that essentially shows how to handle the 3.5 model, the 16K model, the GBT4 model, and it's getting really full comprehension of everything that's entailed there. You can go and check that out. But without further ado, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for tuning in. And yes, surprise, I'm an AI avatar. Make sure to explore more here at Corbin AI where we demystify AI for your personal and business life. Until next time.